Hello. So uh, it's time to answer questions again. This time, uh, questions arising out of week four of the course, and that's the week in which we focused mainly on intentionality. <clears throat> Question one. I, too, am fascinated by dreams and would like to know what Mark has to say about the Jungian belief that dream images are frequently images generated by the unconscious for conscious processing. The, the first thing uh, to say is that that's not an exclusively Jungian belief. In fact, it's quite a general belief, certainly amongst psychoanalysts of all persuasions. Um, but beyond psychoanalysis, and perhaps even within psychoanalysis today, there is not much consensus about dreams. So um, I'll, I'll speak to uh, what are incontrovertible facts, and um, then I'll say something about the major theories um, that are current today. Um, they sort of overlap with each other, uh, as you'll see. What's incontrovertible, and uh, I'm especially emphasizing this part because I myself have done quite a bit of research on brain mechanisms of dreaming. It's an area of special interest of mine. We used to think that dreams happen during REM sleep and that therefore the brain mechanisms for generating REM sleep are the mechanisms for generating dreams. What is incontrovertible is that that's incorrect. Um, it is now definitively proven that dreams occur quite frequently, in fact about a quarter of our dreams occur outside of REM sleep, and secondly that the brain mechanisms that generate REM sleep are not the brain mechanisms that generate dreams. Um, even in REM sleep it's, it's not uh, accurate to, um, to portray the brain mechanisms of REM as the same thing as the brain mechanisms of dreaming. They co-occur, they correlate but they're not the same thing. Um, how we discovered that, this last thing I'm talking about, is that we found large numbers of patients who have damage to a part of the brain which leads to a cessation of dreaming, a loss of dreaming, but REM sleep persists in those patients. Conversely, or, or, or by the same token, we found patients who have damage to the part of the brain that generates REM sleep, uh, in fact, who have no REM sleep, and yet dreaming persists in those patients. That means they're doubly dissociable. There's a part of the brain that, that's critical for dreaming but not for REM sleep. There's another part of the brain that's critical for REM sleep but not for dreaming. That means they can't be the same thing. So uh, the part of the brain that turns out to be critical for dreaming, in fact, there are two parts. The first is the parieto-occipital junction uh, on either side of the brain. And this, this part of the brain is responsible for visuospatial cognition, for, for mental imagery, if you will, the sort of imaginary space. Um, as you can imagine, uh, if you'll excuse the pun, where, where if you can't visually, spatially imagine things, then you, you can't uh, dream, because that's what dreams are. So that's not really that surprising and not that interesting. Much more surprising and interesting is the other part of the brain which is crucial for, for generating dreams, and that is the mesocortical, mesolimbic dopamine system, also known as the seeking system, also known as the wanting system, also slightly um, misnamed as the brain reward system. This part of the brain is highly active it's not only that we've shown that damage to that part of the brain leads to a loss of dreaming, we've also shown that during dreaming sleep, if you scan um, the, the sleeper's brain, during dreaming sleep, that system is switched on like a, like a Christmas tree. Uh, what's interesting about that is that this part of the brain generates motivated behavior. It's in fact the single biggest motivator of action um, of, all, of all mammals. And yet, this thing is switched on when you're fast asleep. So it's kind of a paradox. How can it be that this part of the brain, which makes you do things, um, is so highly activated at the one part, uh, in the one uh, phase of the day, where you literally can't do anything because you're asleep? 
This has led to the first of the... Uh, so all of what I've said so far is incontrovertible. Now I'm moving into theory, and as I said at the outset, there's, there's, there's no consensus in regard to the theoretical question of why do we dream? And I'm coming to this question about the unconscious uh, uh, generating um, dream thoughts for conscious processing. <clears throat> it's, 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 a, it's a variant of the question, why do we dream? What, what is the, what is the, what's happening in the brain when you're dreaming? And what, what, is it, what psychological work is it doing? Um, the first theory, and this is one that I myself subscribe to, um, arises from the facts that I've just told you. Th namely, that there's this paradox that during sleep, when you are um, in a state of, 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 uh, of rest and more, you know, in a state of, 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 of great, uh, great inactivity, the part of your brain that motivates you to do things in the world is uh, switched on sort of full blast. Um, that gives rise to the view that dreams are a sort of alternative to real motivated action in the external world. That the imaginary virtual world of the dream sort of diverts your motivational intentions uh, away from the outside world into this, I'm saying virtual, I could also say hallucinatory, delusional world of the dream. And uh, that's a kind, of, a, a kind of commonsensical theory, I would think, that the dreamed uh, motivated activity happens instead of real motivated activity. Uh, but it's one step further to say that this is the function of dreams. The function of dreams is to keep us asleep. It enables you to not have to really um, do things because you delude yourself that you're doing things in the mental space, the imaginary hallucinatory world of the dream. Now, that's a, that's a, a, a theory. If it's a scientific theory, it has to be testable, which means it has to give rise to predictions, and uh, th those predictions have to be falsifiable. And uh, this is the beauty of, of brain science. In, 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 in dream science, uh, prior to the current era, where we have all of these wonderful tools in neuroscience, there were all sorts of speculative theories, and nobody was able to test them. In fact, uh, Karl Popper famously said that psychoanalysis was a pseudoscience. He used it as an example of uh, something that looks like a science which isn't really a science uh, on precisely these grounds, that it doesn't give rise to falsifiable predictions. Well, this is now a falsifiable prediction, that uh, if it's true that dreams occur in order to keep us asleep, in other words, in order to, uh, to delude us, um, to, to, to trick us uh, uh, into believing that we are doing the things that this motivational system is driving us to do during sleep, uh, then patients with parieto occipital lesions who are not able to generate the, the mental imagery of a dream, but who still have this, the, uh, this uh, seeking system, this motivating dopamine system intact, then when you get the dopamine surge that, that, that would normally lead to a dream, but can't because of the damage to the, to the mental imagery parts of the brain, then you should wake up. That's the prediction. So people with damage to the parieto occipital junction who don't dream uh, should have poor quality sleep. And in fact, that's a study we're busy doing right now. Um, another th uh, current theory um, about the function of dreams is that in our dreams we are processing the events of the day and encoding them uh, in connection with existing um, memory material. So that what happens during dreams is that the events of the day are activated, the memories of the events of the day are activated alongside the activation of long-term previous memories so that the encoding process uh, can um, select uh, what should be remembered or what should be discarded from the dream day and uh, uh, equally importantly, um, w w how and where should this new material be encoded? What does it mean? Which is another way of saying, what is it related to from my previous experience? How do I connect this up with everything else that I know and do? So I'm putting in very sort of um, colloquial terms the theory that uh, dreams serve a, a memory encoding and memory consolidating function. 
And in fact, there's a whole lot of different aspects of memory, as many of you will know. And it seems to be uh, particularly um, fashionable at the moment, the idea that emotionally salient events of the, of the, of the previous day, uh, or the previous two days, in fact, are um, the, particularly the kinds of memories that are encoded and consolidated during dreaming. So there too, uh, we now have an opportunity to test um, this uh, theory using the same patients as I spoke about earlier. The patients who are unable to generate dream images, um, if, if, if dreams perform an important uh, emotionally salient memory consolidating function, then these patients should be defective in their, um, in their capacity uh, to encode such memories. So this is another study that in fact we are busy doing right now um, to uh, 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 decide between these competing hypotheses. And um, indeed, they may not be competing. It's not necessarily the case that dreams do only one thing. Um, many things in biology evolve because they serve one useful purpose. If they happen at the same time to serve another useful purpose, then uh, all the more reason for them to be selected in. Um, they're not designed to to perform a particular purpose, they just happen. And then it turns out that they uh, uh, enhance survival and reproductive fitness. And if they do so in two or three or four ways, then all the more reason for that um, polymorphism to be, to be retained in the genome. Now, uh, the question about unconscious, um, that the unconscious generating uh, material uh, for uh, conscious processing in dreams. Let me fit it into that into the framework that I've that I've outlined. Um, the seeking system, this dopamine system that I've emphasised so much, it serves two main purposes. Um, the, uh, the, or it works in two major ways. Let me say it that way rather. The one is that there are need detectors, as we now all know from this course, there are need detectors in the hypothalamus and elsewhere which are in the brainstem, which are monitoring the, the, the internal milieu, uh, the state of the vital needs of the body. And for obvious reasons, these mechanisms can't switch off during sleep. I mean, these are vital functions. Uh, when you're asleep, uh, just as much as when you're awake, uh, you need to keep your body within the parameters that are compatible with life. And so these need detectors activate um, uh, upper brainstem systems, which in turn are uh, 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 um, uh, connected to instinctual behaviors which lead us into the outside world because that's the only place where your needs can be met. So it's no surprise that the seeking system um, is activated during sleep because, as I say, you have to stay alive even during sleep. And how do you stay alive? You can't auto-regulate your bodily economy. Your bodily economy is making demands upon the mind to perform work in the world because that's the world is where um, your bodily needs can be met. So you have this paradox built into the brain that the, the, there are motives there are volitional urges to do things even when you're asleep. And this has to be balanced um, against the, the, um, the need for sleep, which is another one of our vital needs. Um, but what I'm saying, what I'm emphasizing now is that this is one of the things that activates the seeking system from below is needs, bodily needs. But it's not the only way in which the seeking system can be activated. And you'll know this from your own experience. You can also, motivational interest can be attracted by something that happens in the outside world. So uh, a, 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 an important event occurs outside of you, regardless of your need state, and this attracts your motivational interest. You become, you become um, um, drawn into an external event. These external events are also internalized in our memory systems, and so we have cognitive events uh, which are representations of external events. We have thoughts, we have memories, uh, that these things can also draw motivational interest. And so what I'm saying is that although the seeking system seems to be the pivotal mechanism for generating dreams, it can be activated from below and it can be activated from above. When we speak of unconscious thoughts generating dreams, uh, then we're speaking about dreams being activated from above because thoughts um, representations, cognitions, whether they're conscious or unconscious, are corticothalamic things. They're not lower brainstem things. 
So all of this leads me to say the following. I don't, I, I don't think that um, the unconscious thoughts are, are themselves the, the, the only uh, or even the main motivator of dreams. I think the main motivator of dreams is the activation of the seeking system, which is in itself without representations. And the seeking system then attaches uh, to these representations. But it is true that representations can also draw the interest of the seeking system. But I think the main generator of the dreams, um, uh, uh, we have to say, is the seeking system, is the motivational urge, um, the, the, the um, curiosity, interest, foraging sort of system, which, which I've described this week. Um, there's a lot else that could be said about dreams, and there are a lot of other theories about dreams. I've, I've just emphasized the two main ones. But perhaps I could just sum this, this, this uh, uh, discussion up by making this simple sort of formulaic statement that emotions are problems. They are, the, 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 we have feelings because they're telling us there's something happening that needs a mental attention. That's, as I put it earlier, a demand upon the mind to perform work. Demands are made upon the mind to perform work whether you're awake or asleep. And dreams are the attempt to find solutions. Um, it's the mental work that we're doing to solve the problems that arise while we're asleep. I think that's a, that's a, 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 a kind of neat and, and, and elegant, I hope, way of, uh, of summarizing uh, what brain science is telling us about dreams today. And I hope uh, where these unconscious thoughts fit into that bigger picture, I hope that I've, um, that I've been able to be clear about that.